In this series of lectures, we're going to introduce an idea called branch and bound. The branch and bound algorithm is used to solve mixed integer programs to optimality. But because mixed integer programs are hard, in general, branch and bound algorithms aren't going to run in polynomial time. The setting that we're going to consider is going to involve just integer programs. Specifically, we're going to be interested in solving a problem where the optimal solution is z star. This problem is going to maximize some function f of x over a particular polyhedron with an integer lattice points. To make this more clear, we've expanded out exactly what this problem is. We're maximizing the function f of x subject to some linear constraints and also all the points x run on an integer lattice. In general, we've seen that this problem is very hard. So what we're going to do is tackle it with the branch and bound algorithm. And the main idea behind this branch and bound algorithm is that we're going to first branch, which is break this problem up into subproblems, and then bound, which is compute bounds in each of these subproblems. We're going to see exactly how this branch and bound algorithm is going to be fleshed out over the course of this lecture. First, we'll deal with the branching part of the branch and bound algorithm. To branch means just to split the feasible region. In this case, our feasible region is P. And recall that P isn't just a set of linear constraints, but also includes all of the lattice points. So this feasible region includes only integer entries. Our problem starts off with the feasible region P. To branch, we split the feasible region P usually into halves. In this case, we split our feasible region into P1 and P2. After we branch once, we can continue to branch. We can split our feasible region again. In this case, we've split our feasible region along this fuchsia line to generate regions P11 through P22. Note that each one of these regions, P11 and P12, are a subregion of P1. We can think of this branching operation in terms of a tree. The root of this tree is going to be our original feasible region, P. Then every time we branch, we're going to make children of our node. So in this case, our initial branch that created P1 and P2 is represented by these nodes P1 and P2. P1 and P2 are children of P because they result from branching off of P, splitting the feasible region. We did another branch creating P11 through P22. In this case, each one of these nodes is a children, child of one of the children we already created. P11 and P12 are subregions of P1, and so they're children of P1. On the other hand, P21 and P22 are children of P2 because the regions associated with P21 and P22 are subregions of P2. We can now think of this tree in terms of the subproblems in the branching procedure. A node is a parent of another node if it's a superset. So for example, the node P1 is a parent of the node P11 because P11 is completely contained inside of P1. Vice versa, the children of a node are the subregions of the particular region. So for example, when looking at P1, the subregions are P11, P12, and so P11 and P12 are the children of node P1. This is in general how we're going to think about the branching process. The branching process is going to create a tree that denotes the subset relationships between the different feasible regions. The other part of the branch and bound algorithm is the bounding step. In the bounding step, we're going to effectively compute a solution in each one of our subproblems. However, because the problem is hard, we're not going to compute an exact solution, and instead we're just going to compute an upper and a lower bound. To get a better handle on this, we'll consider our prototypical problem, which is maximizing some function over a feasible region P. Since this is a maximization problem, we'll like to compute an upper bound and a lower bound for it, and computing our upper bound is effectively going to be computing a relaxation to this problem. Computing a lower bound is going to be computing some feasible solution to this problem. So to be more concrete, when we compute an upper bound, we compute a relaxation. And when we compute a lower bound, 
we find some feasible solution, three heuristic or otherwise. However, we can compute an upper bound and a lower bound any way we'd like. When computing an upper and a lower bound, our objective is to find some circumstance where the upper and the lower bound meet each other. If our upper bound meets our lower bound for a particular subproblem, we know that we have optimality. Unfortunately, we only have optimality at the subproblem we're considering. So, for example, if our upper bound meets our lower bound in the subproblem associated with P22, we have an optimal solution. But we only have an optimal solution when the feasible region is restricted to the solutions inside of P22. We don't have optimality for our original problem that has a feasible region of P. If we were to expand the feasible region, we could potentially get a better solution. Now we can get a more global view of what the branch and bound algorithm is about. We start with some very hard problem in some feasible region P. Our objective is to find the optimal solution to this problem. To go about that, we're going to break this problem into smaller subproblems. To break it into smaller subproblems, we're going to split the feasible region into smaller feasible regions. Eventually, we'll get to a point where we have a feasible region that's so small that we can find an optimal solution. We find the optimal solution by computing an upper bound and a lower bound and identifying when the upper bound meets the lower bound. To make sure that we don't need to split a problem further, however, we compute an upper bound and a lower bound every time we do a problem split. So for example, when we split the problem and find P2, we'll compute the upper bound and the lower bound. If they meet each other, we have optimality. If they don't meet each other, then we split the problem up further. This is the general idea behind branch and bound. We branch, we split, we compute an upper bound and a lower bound. If we reach optimality, we stop. And if we don't, then we split further until we get to a point where we do reach optimality. We can see now from our tree structure that in our leaf nodes, we've decomposed our original problem into very small subproblems. If we were to compute the optimal solution at each one of these smaller problems, we could recover an optimal solution to our original problem. The optimal solution to the original is just the best optimal solution that we find in all of the leaf nodes. This is how we wrap up our branch and bound algorithm. We're going to go into more detail about each one of the steps, the branching and the bounding, in future lectures.